Welcome ladies and gentlemen, we're here at Richmond for the first race of round two in the 2018 NRSL Mountain Dew for the Win Cup Series Chase. Last two races we've had first time winners in John Nunn at Papyrus and Matthew McIntyre last week at Auto Club after a caution during the last round the green flags pit stops really, really shaked up the field. After last week, the following drivers were eliminated from title contention. Austin Alves, Joshua Osborne, Deanna Jones, and Charles Jackson. Only 12 remain, and they are Andrew Rich, Zach Flickinger, Alex Gray, Jonathan Zorlin, Seth Cole, DJ Curtis, Cole Deaver, Johnny Gardner, William Brock, Diego Yepes, TJ Hanley, and Cody Hagan. The points have reset. Rich now has those 30 bonus points. That will give him a 30-point advantage over the cut line, and he'll need it today because he starts 42nd place. Now let's get you to the irregular starting lineup. Alex Gray won this race in the spring, barely over Diego Yepes. Starting lineup for today's race, Charles Sanford is on the pole tonight, uh, today. This is Sanford's. Where is he in the point standings? This is his first pole in 2018 he currently sits last in the point so this could be a good idea a good idea a good opportunity to bounce back from 42nd next to him is austin alves one of the drivers who was eliminated from the chase last week row two is another one joshua osborne with seth cole who remains in the playoffs row three is johnny gardner and cole deaver gardner finished here ninth back in the spring so he's going to look for another good race. In row four is DJ Curtis and Jessica Shelton. And in row five, Deanna Jones and Cody Hagen. Now as for the rest of your chase drivers, Alex Gray will start 12th. You can see him in the three car right there. So we'll get it back up to Charles Sanford. TJ Hanley starts 13th. William Brock 28th. Yepes 29th, Sorlin 30th, Flickinger 40th, and as I mentioned, Andrew Rich will start 42nd. So we've got a couple of eliminated drivers starting in the top 10, so this could be an interesting race. 140 laps of action, 20 laps longer than the spring, so strategy should be cool to see. Let's go trackside for the Command Fire Engines. Drivers, start your Man has been given cloudy afternoon here today in the spring we had a nice sunny day so completely different conditions here in this fall race next week we head to Atlanta see some clear skies with the Sun being blocked out today Next week, race at Atlanta, where Johnny Gardner almost won. There he starts fifth today. This could be a good opportunity as they'll come off of turn four. Green flag in the air. We are underway here at Richmond. Sanford still looking for his first win of 2018 after a lone win at Watkins Glen in 2017. Joshua Osborne, your winner from Vegas, looking for his second victory as Sanford leads lap one. Osborne will complete the pass on Alves for second place. Alves will fall in line in third. Gardner trying to fall in line in fourth. Curtis will not quite get to his inside. And the top five has been formed with two chase drivers in the top five. Two former in front of them in the top three as Curtis will make a diving move for fourth place. Deanna Jones falls in line behind there. Fitzwater there as they are three wide with Jessica Shelton in the middle. And Shelton will pull up in front of Cole Deaver here mid-corner or in the entry of three. And then Seth Cole, ooh, some small contact there. Shelton wobbling all around here and her supernova Chevrolet. Kev Shearer, James Qualls, Dylan Young, Charles Jackson on the inside line. Let's go find Andrew Rich. We'll see how the 53 car is doing. He's already working his way on the bottom as Jonathan Zorlin is up top three wide with Flickinger on the bottom. William Brock falling backwards. 
Andrew Rich already up to 35th place. Remember, he got his lone short track win of his career back at the Dodge Motodrome early on in the season. And he had a very good shot to win here also, but they had a fueling. They were short on fuel, or they had a fueling issue on the one of the cautions. And they were forced to pit on the green along with teammate Deanna Jones. There's team owner Zach Rogers. He's falling back. As they are three wide there. Austin in the middle of Tony Green. We did have a couple cautions back in the spring, so we should expect some maybe here in the fall race. They are really pushing the, the parameters of this racetrack. Andrew Rich continues to go on the move. Sack Flickinger has shown some good speed. Showed, showed some good speed in round one. And there's a wreck. Eli Bright's around. Cody Higgins involved. Rich barely got by all that. That was crazy. Nico Tringali went down pit road. Charles Sanford is your race leader. As Emmanuel Harton is involved. Tringali went straight down pit road. It looks like he got a decent amount of damage. Bad luck continues for the 84 car. And let's take a look and see what caused the first caution of the day. As there will be pitters. And this all starts with Cody Hagen sliding up a bit mid corner of one and two. Gets into teammate and team owner Seth Cole. And that sends the eight down into Eli Bright. Two chase contenders right there in front of two more. That sends Hagen in the wall. That sends Seth Cole in the wall. Right in front of Deaver and Alex Gray. Michael Amato gets a piece of this. Andrew Rich looks like he's about to clobber and slams the brake pedal. Gets low. Tringali clips the 37. Rich did a really good job slamming the brake pedal to get through that. Oh, and then Hartnett gets turned around by Sorlin. And that was the end of the accident. So a couple of playoff drivers involved, Hagen and Seth Cole. This should be interesting to see what happens when we get to our race restart. Getting ready to go back racing. Nico Tringali a lap down some strategy at play here. DJ Curtis and Andrew Rich elected not to pit under this caution. So depending on how the rest of the race goes, this could be some interesting strategy at work here. Now for the rest of the top 10, Sanford third, first out of pit road, Austin Alves fourth, Deanna Jones fifth, Osborne sixth, Hanley seventh, Shear eighth, Young ninth, and James Shelley rounds out the top 10. Nobody has retired as you see Tringali still 42nd place. Hagen down the 40th, Seth Cole didn't lose any track position. In fact, he's 20th. But now everyone's stretched out single file. Playoff driver DJ Curtis won back at Yas Marina. He's looking to get another one here today. As the green flag is back out at Richmond, he will pull completely away from Tringali there. Rich will clear as well, but not Sanford. He's not as lucky. Tringali is underpowered. We'll see how this affects the field. There was a slow car back in the spring race and did not make things fun for the leaders as Deanna Jones isn't sure if she can make it three wide here yet. And there's the movement. Some contact there from the looks of things. That'll shove Tringali into the top line. Hanley now really not benefiting at all. You can see the bottom line is just flying on by. That's Diego Yepes. Alves now falling from fifth. Sanford got in, has gotten to the back of Andrew Rich. Remember, these drivers do have fresh rubber. 17 and the 53 are not going to hang on here for long. Back to Charles Sanford in the 03. He's got a good distance to Joshua Osborne right now. If he could get by Rich. Quickly, he could get a decent lead. Let's go on board a lap with the O3 car. That looks to have been a spin, but no caution. 
possibly Eli Bright yet again. As Harton and Hagen have gone down pit road from the looks of things. Not sure what the problem is for those two. That's really going to hurt Cody Hagen, though, for his playoff bid. Indeed, there's Bright, there's Hartnett, Sands. Michael Amato's got back end damage. I'm wondering if that has anything to do with what we saw. Jonathan Sorlin at the back of this field needs to get going. William Brock also not having a good day. Finally, Alex Gray and Cole Deaver right in front of Seth Cole, who has no back bumper. So a lot of chase drivers having problems here today at Richmond. That's going to make Atlanta really important with Talladega being the chase cutoff race. We are 20 laps into the race today. Curtis still leads the field. As Rich continues to hold up Sanford, who can't find the way around the 53. He's just so tucked up underneath the bumper of the 53 and now there it is there's the move to the inside as Joshua Osborne catches up to the back of that Chevy SS <clears throat> Deanna Jones fifth young six Caleb Hoffman your 2017 champ in seventh as young makes a move on Jones for fifth place as now rich will most likely start to plummet in the running order Hoff back down in line in front of Dylan Young. And now they're really pulling in on DJ Curtis now that they've gotten by Andrew Rich. Sanford would be looking for win number one. Osborne looking for win number two. 70 team not happy that they got knocked out after round one. And Diego Yepes who finished Second place here in the spring has cracked his way into the top 10. But Hagen, Sorlin, Brock, and Deaver at the bottom four from the chase right now. Through here, Flickinger is up to 23rd, Gray 22nd, Seth Cole 21st. Actually, now Flickinger down to 22nd. Cole down to 23rd. Actually, Flickinger moving up. I don't know. Gardner's down to 16th. TJ Hanley's 15th. Yep, as 11th. Rich in 5th. Curtis leading. And well, Osborne slides up through turn 1. Dylan Young in 4th place. Dylan had a... Good run at, I believe it was, oh, was it Pike's Peak or was it Papyrus? I think it was Papyrus he had the good run. He had a shot at the win and now sitting in fourth here today at Richmond. Young still looking for that first career victory in this series. Oh, look at Sanford was jabbing the break there in three and four. He's right on the bumper of Curtis. Rich has not fallen far yet, but he is beginning to. Now he's stuck on that top line with worn tires. He is being eaten alive here as Mark Riggleman, who was in the top 10, is about to lose that position to Hoffman. 2017 champ Caleb Hoffman still on his quest to get career win number one. I said it's been 60 Seven races. Let me see. 36 last year. If you count the two rounds of Puco, that's uh, 30 races. So this is race 67. Looking for win number one. But 2017 champion Caleb Hoffman did not make the playoffs on points this year. So Hoffman really needing to prove to his team after leaving Penske that he is in this 14 car for a reason. As I believe Joshua Osborne might be going for the lead here. And that is indeed the case. Sanford has lost 
Second place to Osborne Young went by as well, and now Osborne will pass DJ Curtis for the race lead here at Richmond. As Dylan Young will follow behind in second, they are approaching the slow car of Eli Bright. Nico Tringali also looming in the distance. Those two about a second off. And when Curtis is going to get back to the inside of Young using the slow car of the 37 as a pick. Sanford will get back by as well. And Young will hop in line in front of Charles Jackson. And now Sanford and these others got to work hard here. There's the other Red Bull car, Nate Rogers. Remember, had the engine problem at Papyrus. Nate looking for a shot to win here today. He won at this racetrack in 2017. Audi Red Bull still looking for their first win as a team here. And the pressure is on considering that there will be a three car BMW team in this series next year. The two car Audi outlet will really have their work cut out for them. After Dodge's domination this year, 10 races won for Dodge between just Deanna Jones, actually 11 races won between Deanna Jones, Andrew Rich, and John Nunn. Chevy and, Chevy and Ford have done a decent job. Toyota we have not really seen in victory lane. Aside from Yepes and Flickinger. Now Nate Rogers to the inside of Deanna Jones. Remember Jones is retiring after this season. That 29 car will not be on the track next year as the number changes for Bulldog. That will be the 9, the 19, the 23, and the 39. So possibly an opportunity for some other team to snag the 29. Curtis has fallen the fifth. Rich is no longer even in the top 10. Jackson has made his way up to fourth. Sanford now back in second as Osborne leads the field. Andrew Rich has plummeted down the 14th. Whenever they decide to pit, as long as the race stays green, it'll be a good strategy call for Rich and Curtis. But if we have a caution come out before everyone else has pit, it will be disastrous for their races. Look at this, 154 in the turn one down to about 100 miles an hour. Sanford's trying to close in, but it's tough press now that Osborne got by him. Dylan Young, another driver who has yet to win in his career. Said it's here in third for the second week in a row. Or the second time in this chase with a chance to win. Papyrus being the aforementioned other opportunity where he was right there as well. Caleb Hoffman also in the top ten. John Nunn has found his way into ninth. So none looking to get another win in the chase. Kind of like how Charles Jackson won two without being in the playoffs last year. Jackson, one of the few two-time winners who has yet to win in 2018. That includes Amato and James Shelley who won two races last season. Those three drivers account for five speedway wins and one short track win. Jackson winning Chicagoland and Iowa. Amato won Charlotte and what was the other track? I cannot recall the other track Amato won at. I believe it what, was it a short track actually. I think Amato won at Bristol. I can't I can't remember 100%. Um, Shelley won at Indianapolis and Homestead though. I know that for a fact. Uh, these guys are closing up on the back of Osborne. Curtis, you can see, holding up 6th place Caleb Hoffman. Rich has fallen to 16th place. 
Zamato is not having a good day. He's 38th. James Shelley is 13th. Shelley's best run of the season came a few weeks ago at Pikes Peak. So, lap 47. One caution flag and a pretty good race so far afterwards. Fastest lap of the day goes to the 70 of Osborne, a 20.218. Dylan Young is 10th on that list. Sanford is 17th on that list. A lot of guys in the twos. Trincali never really got a chance to run a good lap. He was always on the top. And Young's creeping up to the back bumper of Charles Sanford. Excuse me. Bit of a yawn there. And Young goes into three. A little hard slides up just a tad. It's going to give a little distance for Sanford. Distance is really not changing between the 0370. The 03 and the 70. Kurt is continuing to hold up the field in fifth. John Nunn side by side for seventh place. Jessica Shelton making her way into the top ten here today at Richmond. And now she'll look for eighth on Nate Rogers. There's James Shelley in eleventh. Alex Gray sits fifteenth, and then there's another split. Where is Andrew Rich? Down to oh, that's Quentin Moore actually. Where is Andrew Rich? There he is. Rich has really fallen with his worn tires a lot more so than DJ Curtis. So probably not the right strategy call to stay out. It's lap 53, they've gone over 50 laps. I'm surprised we have not seen those guys pit yet. Curtis and Rich, that is. Curtis still sits in fifth as none has moved up to sixth. Shelton up to 7th. Both have made it by Caleb Hoffman. Jessica Shelton still looking for her first career victory in the Cup Series. A little bit tough. It's getting tough. They, they really got to find the way to get by Curtis. They are all being held up. As Hoffman will shove the 0-2 back to the top side. As James Shelley has made his way into the top 10, Nate Rogers has fallen out of the top 10. So Hoffman will make it back by Shelton. We'll see if Yepes and Shelley and anyone else can get by the 02 car as well. And Curtis will finally make his move down pit road. Here on lap 56. So Curtis did a good job. Andrew Rich, however, not as great. And now we have to wait and see as these eight next eight laps go by. When Osborne and these other drivers will come down pit road. And they've got to hope that we don't see a caution. Actually, I think Dylan Young has already made his way down pit road. Two of Dylan Young already come down. There is DJ Curtis. He will get out back in front of Osborne. That'll let him stay one down. As they catch Eli Bright. Yep, Dylan Young actually came down a little early. Possibly a good call that could cycle him in front of Osborne. Once these drivers pit, and they are actually looking to pit a little early, I think. Nope, never mind. It was just the angle he was taken to the corner. 60 laps complete. 
So Dylan Young chose to pit a little early. That keeps him in front of Curtis. Rich is two laps down. Where is the 53 machine? And he is right here behind Ferrante, who's 20th. Now, if Rich can't pass people, these fresh tires are not doing anything for him. He has got to pass people while he is up here with these fresh rubber. Look how much harder he can tackle the corner. And both the tide cars in frame here. Oh, he's just almost pushing the 34 into the corner as we're seeing a lot of people start to come down pit road. Osborne still staying out. Osborne and Sanford still stay out. We had some people come down pit road. Zach Flickinger, I believe, was one of them. Alex Gray, I see. Cole Deaver. A couple chase drivers down pit road. Lap 64. And I think Osborne is looking to come in this time, and he will. So that'll give the lead to Charles Sanford once again. As drivers start to come out of pit road. This is where things could get touchy. Sanford continuing to stay out. This hill. Make the move to pass Tringali here. Does he make it? He will. Oh, here comes Alex Gray with a huge run. And Sanford's coming down pit road. That's going to hold up the three car just a bit. Anyone staying out? Unsure. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back when pit cycle has completed. Cycle is complete. Dylan Young is your new race leader with about a two and a half second lead over DJ Curtis. So Young made the right call. Curtis closing in a lot that lap, but Young caught in a little lap traffic. He's behind last week's winner, Matthew McIntyre. So Curtis benefited well from staying out under that caution. He was able to hold himself in the top five. Rich did not, and Rich still sits outside the top 20 in 24th place. So these drivers should all have to pit one more time. They, went all, they mostly all went about 60 laps on fuel. Everyone's going to have to pit one more time as it's a 140 lap race. So Curtis sits second. Osborne is down to third. Otherwise, he would be in the lead if the two had not pit early. John Nunn, fourth place. Winner from Papyrus. Jackson in fifth. Sixth place, Sanford. Seventh is Flickinger, surprisingly. He pit a little early. Brickleman in 8th, Gray is in ninth. also pit early, battle for 10th between Shelley and Nate Rogers. Right now Chase Drive is benefiting really well from this is Curtis Flickinger and Gray. Along with Diego Yepes who's in 13th but he's got Deaver, Hanley right behind him. Gardner, Seth Cole also right there, Seth Cole doing a good job for his back end damage, still in the top 20. Rich, though, down to 25th. He's not doing well. Brock has made his way up to 26th. Soylent's 29th. But Hagen, 41st, four laps down. So let's see here. Let's go to the 47 of TJ Hanley. Let's see what he's up to. About to pass teammate Eli Bright. So Hanley sits 15th. Another mediocre points run for this team. Cole Deaver in front in 14th. Yep, is in 13th. Gardner a little ways back there behind. So Hanley's team really bringing it together here. 
They finished 36 in the spring, so definitely so far a better run for this team. As we mentioned, Gray in the top 10 again. He won the race in the spring. Yep, as we also stated, who is 13th, finished 2nd. Curtis, who runs 2nd, finished 4th. As for the others, Seth Cole about running where he finished last year. Deaver, I mean in the spring, Deaver finished 18th in the spring. He's 14th right now, so a little improvement for that team. Flickinger, a big improvement. He sits 7th. He finished 23rd here in the spring. And Sorlin, who finished 39th, as we said, is in the top 30. Cody Hagen, though, finished 8th here, and he is not having a good day, nor is Brock, who finished 13th. But we are past halfway. Young doing a very good job leading this race. Two-second lead, Osborne and some others, though, with the fresher tires, are starting to make their charges. It's all really going to depend on how fast they can get there. And when the final pit stop occurs, right now, Osborne gained about almost two and a half, three tenths there that lap. John Nunn right behind him in fourth. Jackson's fifth. Those are the main three hunting down the top two. There's another two tenths chopped off on the lead by Osborne. Kurt is not really gaining or losing from Young since they pit. Around the same lap, actually Young pit a little earlier than Curtis, so I'm surprised Curtis has not started chopping down that distance yet. Under 60 to go here at Richmond. Everyone kind of just chilling right now where they are. Perhaps a battle between Shelly and Gray for ninth from the look of the difference there. Let's see if that's the case or not. No, Gray, Gray currently still holds on to ninth place. So Osborne and these other guys are really starting to close in. Now Curtis is not gaining or losing. But Osborne, every lap, it's about two tenths faster. Young was behind Cody Hagen possibly, or no, Hagen actually might be catching Dylan Young. So Young has used up his tires a decent amount here. He's got to try and hold off Cody Hagen. Once he gets put to the outside, he's going to lose about maybe a whole second to those behind him. So far, it's unsure whether this was the right call. It's been about 30 laps since this two-car pit. Time will really tell if this thing goes green when they make their final pit stop. When they make it, how much fuel they put in. Two tires, four tires. Osborne has cut the lead down to three seconds even last time by. Still about a tenth and a half, two tenths every lap by the 70 car. But Nunn and Jackson are going to be right there when they catch up. Hagen's actually making a look to the outside. That's going to hurt the eight. He's going to fall back a ways. Curtis about to be caught by Joshua Osborne. There's none right there on the bumper of the 70. Jackson also looming in the distance. Two one-time winner rookies with a veteran driver who hasn't won yet in 2018 who had two wins last year. This is becoming an interesting race. Most of the field has definitely been closing the gap. The end of Jones has made her way into 10th. When we were done with the pit cycle, Dylan Young had 10 seconds over 10th place. And now that's down to about 7.5. Probably going to get lower and lower as this run goes on. Curtis now has been caught by Osborne. Can Osborne make the right run here off a of 2? Doesn't look like it. 
50 to go last time by. Curtis has also been gaining a little bit. He's got a few more lap, two, two or two laps, is it? I think maybe a lap or two pressure tires than Dylan Young. Osborne and Nunna right there. And there it is. Osborne makes a very aggressive dive into turn three here. And Curtis will probably fall back to about fifth or sixth place. See, none will make it by on the inside line. Jackson's going to get to the bottom of the 17 as well. And Osborne and none will start hunting down Dylan Young. So Curtis will fall to fourth, I mean fifth. He'll try and get back in a rhythm here. As Sanford will approach from behind. Next car up would be Flickinger, who's got a ways to go. James Shelley back into 10th as Deanna Jones has made her way up to 8th. Jones also had a shot to win here back in the spring. She also pit with Andrew Rich. Where is the 53 car? If Young's tires are shot, so is the 53, and he is down the 35th place. So Rich's strategy did not work in his favor. Hagen still all over the bumper of Dylan Young. Leads down to a second and a half. It's going to keep shrinking here. And if Hagen gets the Youngs inside, there it is. This is very bad for the two car. He's got to find a way to get back to the bottom. Tringali's now looming in. Tringali does have some damage, though. So Young will lose a lot of time there. Osborne and the others in the distance. Osborne looking to get back to the race lead, looking for career win number two. Osborne was looking to pass Tringali there in the one, but he had to backtrack. Leads down to under a second now. Curtis still sits fifth. He's got Sanford on his bumper. Ooh, and Nunn made a mistake there. He tried to chop down. That's going to let Jackson get in the third. And now none stuck behind Tringali, but Curtis is holding up Sanfer. Riggleman in the top 10 today, doing a really good job. Unsure if that driver will return with that 2016 next year. That's still up in the air. Now Osborne is clear sailing as he approaches the back of Dylan Young. It'll be 40 to go in about a lap and a half. And it's been about it's been 50 laps since Dylan Young pit, so he will be pitting soon. So this might have been the right call here, even if he gets passed. If they take four tires, it could be the right call if the rest of this field behind them have to pit. Osborne is right there now on the bumper of Dylan Young. Forty laps to go here at Richmond. Osborne does not make a move in one that's gonna let Jackson close up to his bumper. It's also always the possibility of a caution flag coming out, but there it is. There's the move by Osborne. So we saw Curtis making a move by Tringali in the distance, and now John Nunn gets back to the inside of Jackson. Thirty-nine to go as Osborne takes the race lead back. John Nunn will fly by Dylan Young for second place. See if Jackson can get to Dylan's inside. He's still riding the top line. And Young's doing a good job holding off Jackson as Sanford finally gets by Curtis for fifth place. Deanna Jones has made her way into seventh. Flickinger sits in eighth. Riggleman ninth. And TJ Hanley has found himself in the top ten. Another great run by this rookie here in the 47 car who has not won a race in 2018. We should see the two car, and there it is, Dylan Young's down pit road. Now the question is, when will we see the 17 of Curtis pit? So Curtis moves back up in the fifth. It's the same position he was in when he pit last time. So now the strategy game is out, and we will stay here for the entire conclusion of this race, unless we have a caution. Field's pretty spread out, though. I don't think we'll see any three wide incidents to get us a yellow. Now Deanna Jones is about to catch DJ Curtis for fifth. Jones, who almost won this race in the spring, 
about three seconds behind Osborne. Not sure if she'll get enough ground. John Nunn's pretty much the only one battling the 70 car right now. Two rookies battling for this win. Go into turn one. Deanna Jones will pass DJ Curtis by for fifth place. As Flickinger is about to get by Tringali. And here comes DJ Curtis. He'll dive it down here on lap 106. I'll move Hanley up to seventh. Deanna Jones continuing to track down drivers. She's doing a really good job. John Nunn is all over the bumper of Osborne. Sanford was the last one to pit last time. We had a cycle. He's slowly closing in on, on the 70 of Osborne. John Nunn is all over Osborne's bumper right now. And Osborne will pit here on lap 108, trying to minimize the time Dylan Young will gain. That'll give the nine car the lead for the first time all day. And there's Curtis getting out in front of the nine. Jackson, Sanford still on track. Here comes the nine of none. Jackson will come down as well. Jackson, I mean, Sanford stays out as the Deanna Jones. These two are staying out the longest here. The question will be, is this the right call to make? Where is the two car? He is the highest out of those who have pit. There's Alex Gray coming out of pit road as well. Oh, oh was there, has there been a caution? Yes, the caution flag is out. Oh, this changes everything. This changes everything. This will trap half the field a lap down, and Dylan Young will be one of them. Oh, man, this has changed everything. Let's take a look and see what brought out the second caution of the day. I was waiting for one of these things to happen. Andrew Rich coming off a of pit road. John Arndt is trying to pit. And it's just bad spot of communication. Rich has the fresh tires. Gets in the Arndt. And Arndt is still trying to pit here. And he turns right down in front of Philip Goldberg. And that spins the 48 around. This is the best angle we can use. And this is what brings out the caution flag. You see Tony Green piling it into Philip Parker. Zach Rogers gets a piece. Dylan Young's right here. And that is not what the two-car wanted to see. He was going to win this race, I think. It took 30 laps for anyone to catch him last time. Curtis is pretty far back. Definitely not what Dylan Young wanted to see. Now he's stuck a lap down. And here, he's going to need a quick yellow if he's going to have a chance to get back on the lead lap. He'll be tailing on the lead lap. Devastating for Dylan Young and his team, as well as DJ Curtis and others. Not what they wanted to see. Let's get you back to the race restart. We're back here for once with the lights still on the pace car. Interesting thing to note is this. The highest car was Charles Jackson. Out of those who had pit, it was Charles Jackson who was in the best spot. So it wasn't even Dylan Young. In fact, Osborne had got in front of Dylan Young before that caution flag came out. John Nunn was right there in 22nd. Riggleman, Curtis. So we'll see some drivers... We'll restart on the inside line. Some of these guys are a lap down. That includes Cole Deaver and Diego Yepes here. Jackson will be the control car in 19th on the tail end. Gardner is a lap down. Seth Cole's a lap down. Zorlin's a lap down. Rich, that, not what these guys wanted. Flickinger's 25th. Gray's 26th. A lot of chase drivers that are going to have bad days here. The top guy is right here is Charles Sanford. Jones, second. Hanley, the top chaser in third. Fitzwater, fourth. Nate Rogers, fifth. Ferranti 6th, Rose 7th, Alves 8th, Brock 9th, Quinton Moore's 10th. And that's it. There's only two chasers up here on the lead lap, Brock and Hanley. Well, not tail end. If you want to count tail end, you've got Curtis, Flickinger, and Gray. Green flag's back out. We'll see if there's going to be a quick yellow or not. James Shelley has retired from the race, so he will finish last. Oh man, this is insane. 
Look at this restart. They've got cars with damage up here. You've got Tringali and Tony Green holding people up on the bottom. You've got Gray and Flickinger trying to stay on the lead lap. Sanford's right here in a Hornets and that's trying to win this race. 24 to go. I do not know if we are done seeing the caution flag. Anyone up here is a lap down, maybe two laps down. Now these guys that pit on the caution do have the freshest rubber on the racetrack. There's a lap down car between Sanford and Deanna Jones. Hanley and Fitzwater along with Nate Rogers are the only ones who have pulled away completely from all the slow traffic. Things are still pretty dicey right up here. Jackson and Osborne trying to pull away from the pack. As Nico Tringali comes out of pit road. Oh, this is bad news. Oh, right in front of Andrew Rich. That's going to hold up the bottom line. You can see it happening already. Oh, this is disaster waiting to happen. Oh, and there it is. Hoffman's going to get turned by Charles Sanford. Did that bring out a caution? It did. Caution's out for the third time today. The leader turns a lap down car. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good. They're three wide back here on their caution. Oh, Fitzwater and others are sliding up. They're four wide. Oh, John Nunn's going to get turned in front of Deanna Jones. None will get it back going. That's going to prevent a lot of craziness. That helped Alex Gray, Dylan Young, Osborne, and many others. That puts Jackson, Osborne, Young, and Gray back on the lead lap. In contention for a better finish, still a lot of cars one lap down. We saw what happened. Hoffman just was there. Everyone was stacking up. He got turned by race leader. Back in damage to the 14. So now we have to see them stack it up all over again. And Sanford, they will still have to deal with the double file restart. We are nowhere close to 10 to go. So Sanford is not looking too hot right now because he's got... Deanna Jones teammate John Nunn who will restart the first car lap down on the bottom so Jones will be second Fitzwater third Hanley fourth fifth Nate Rogers six Ferranti seventh Alves Brock is eighth Sands ninth and Parker sits in tenth place John Arndt eleventh who brought out the second caution Rowe is twelfth Goldberg thirteenth Zach Rogers, 14th. Austin, 15th. McIntyre, 16th. Moore, 17th. Shelton, 18th. Jackson, 19th. On the oldest tires on the racetrack, arguably. Osborne is 20th. Young, 21st. And Gray, 22nd. But that gives Gray, the only chaser of those four who was tail end, a very good chance to gain more track position here. It'll probably be about 15 to go. No one will retire. Where is the 84 in this line? Because he was right up there. 84 could really impact. He's at the back now. In fact, yeah, he was one of the ones that got a bit of a wave around there. He was in front of the leader. So this will make things interesting. I'm uncertain if there are any other slow cars up here. Is there anyone with... Oh, there is the four of Tony Green. He will be a challenge. He's got no hood. Pretty much everyone's got a full-powered race car, though. It looks like it'll be maybe 15 to go restart if the lights go off here. Very interesting race, though, to say the least. Interesting way to start off round two in the playoffs. With Atlanta coming up next. Atlanta was green flag from start to finish in the spring. 
We're expecting to see that again, as well as at Texas when we go to Texas in a few weeks. Talladega was a bit of a wreck fest in the spring, so that's going to be a crazy cutoff race for round two. Here we go, Charles Sanford. Your pole sitter today. Looking to get his first career win since 2017 at Watkins Glen. And it's not a road course. We are at a short track. Deanna Jones is there, though, looking for win number five. She might be out of the playoffs, but she wants to win again before her career is over. She hasn't won since she swept Puco back in the summer. Fitzwater's there. He's looking for his second win. He won back at Auto Club. Hanley, the top chaser, looking for his first win in his rookie season. That would catapult him in the round three and help avoid Talladega. 15 to go. Will we get green flag to the end? Here we go. Is none going to be able to hold on the inside? He will. This will make things interesting. Some drivers are going to be trying to get their laps back here. Remember, these guys on the top do have the freshest rubber. None still trying to get down there. None unlaps himself. Sanford sitting in the top. Still sitting on the top. Has anyone on the lead lap gotten to the bottom yet? TJ Hanley has as Tony Green gets shuffled to the top side. Oh, Hanley is loving what he's seeing here. If he can have Sanford stay up top. Flicking jersey there, and then there's a bit of a gap. Emmanuel Hartnett's going to fill that gap. Here comes TJ Hanley. Hanley moves up top. Someone's coming out of pit road. No, never mind. It's my imagination. Hanley's let himself get put to the top by Caleb Hoffman. That is not good for him. 12 to go. Does Hoffman clear Hanley? Does Hanley get back to the bottom? No. Now it's Fitzwater on the bottom as Deanna Jones has some hood damage. Sanford still stuck on the top as Hanley closes in from behind. But Fitzwater's the driver on the bottom. Does Sanford get enough room to clear here? He's cleared. Can he get down in front of Fitzwater? No, he won't. Fitzwater gets down. Now Hanley's on the bottom. Battle for the lead between Fitzwater and Sanford. Hanley in third. Fitzwater clears Sanford. Coming to 10 to go. Fitzwater looking for win number two on the season. But TJ Hanley, one of the playoff contenders, is right there in second place. William Brock has made his way into the top four. Here he is in fourth. Peter Sands in fifth looking for his first career victory. But does anyone have anything for Fitzwater Sr. with nine to go? To the inside of Flickinger. That's going to let Hanley close up a little bit. He doesn't want to get to the top side, though. He wants to stay here in second. Still a very good point save for Hanley if he can get second place. The top four award the most points by far. Hanley's got a bumper full of Sanford. Brock and Sands are right there. That's the top five all closed up. There is craziness going on here in the front. Curtis is being put back a lap down. And there's been a caution flag. Is the race going to end? They hit it at 7 to go. I, I think we might get a green-white checkered. We're going to have to take a quick break to see what brought out the yellow because I do not know what it was for. Hey, we talked about Tony Green would, was going to be in the way, and he's barely three wide here, and Rose just going to come off the corner, and he's not going to give his teammate any slack. And that just turns Green straight down, and Alex Gray makes some contact, and four cars around at this point. He's going to hit the inside safer barrier. Spin around, and that brings out the fourth caution of the day. That'll be the final one, unless we have another one on this uh, restart here. I think we're going to get it. So let's go back and see if we go back green. 
it is time for a green white checkered in the playoffs here at richmond fitzwater senior is your race leader playoff contender tj hanley who is winless in 2018 will restart second with a shot at a win it, right through his windshield he's looking at just one car in the way sanford sits in third he hasn't won since 2017 william brock hasn't won in his career he's in the playoffs peter sanson fifth hasn't won in his career He's not in the playoffs. Flickinger is going to be in the way. I don't think anyone from from behind fifth is going to win. Nate Rogers is sixth. Deanna Jones is seventh. Um, you've got to go back to Moore in eighth. Alves in ninth. And Jackson's made his way up to tenth. So good job, Jackson. Restarted 19th last time. But here we go. Two laps to go at Richmond Raceway. Who's going to get the win in the first race of round two? Green flag is out. Hanley got a good restart. Who gets the move to the inside first? It's going to be Sanford. Sanford makes the move on Hanley. Does he have enough time to get to the bumper of Fitzwater? I don't know. I think the move had to come from second place first. White flag is in the air for Fitzwater. William Brock's looking at another two points if he can get by Sanford. Will he make the move into turn three? He will not, but it's gonna be Fitzwater Sr. winning here at Richmond for his second win of the season. William Brock comes home third and Hanley will end up in fifth. What a race, Sanford second, Sands fourth, Nate Rogers sixth, Deanna Jones seventh, Moore eighth. Charles Jackson ninth and Austin Owls rounds out the top ten. Race is official. Let's look at the rest of the finishing order for the playoff drivers. Alex Gray fourteenth. Um let's see, Curtis ends up twenty-third. Wow, that's that's it. That's the top four guys. Only that's not a lot of good finishes for these guys. These points are still probably pretty tight. Flickinger gets 28th, Deeper 29th, Cole 30th, Soylent 32nd, Rich 33rd. So Rich really doesn't lose a lot here today. Garner 35th, Yepes 37th, and Hagen 38th. So a lot of guys outside the top 25. So these point standings are still going to be pretty tight. But the big benefactors here is definitely William Brock and TJ Hanley, who come in with no bonus points. But that is it for me here at Richmond, and I will see you guys next week at Atlanta.